so where do I start? Lab orientation, why do we do this? Um, we do it because it's actually an OSHA requirement. And OSHA classifies every worker that uh, is any working environment in any laboratory or any uh, factory. And the first level of classification is awareness. And that is what you're accomplishing by going through this orientation, by taking the lab quiz, and by going to the lab safety course. You're qualified at an awareness level. From that definition, you can see that um, this is going to be related to safety. So it's evacuation from the facility. It's knowing what hazards are in the facility. It's knowing how to report them. And really that's uh, what this orientation is about. And that's what we're going to be reviewing. Knowing safety is MSDS sheets. These are giving you all the material properties. You've reviewed them and what information is contained on the MSDS and lamp safety. This is where we keep ours. Basically, on the left side of this cabinet, we have two volumes of wet chemicals listed in alphabetical order. These are all solvents, acids, and bases that are in the clean room, and even non-specific chemicals. On this side, we have compressed gases. You can see there are fewer compressed gases than there are chemicals. All right, the other location of MSDS sheets are inside the clean room. Immediately as you enter the clean room to the right by the lost and found cart, you will find another set of chemical MSDSs that are on clean room paper, and you can utilize those inside the clean room as a resource. So what are these doing for you, and why are they here? What they're doing for you is they're giving you background information on chemicals that you might use in the facility before you ever go in. So this way you know what the fighting fire, firefighting procedures are, what the first aid protocols are, well before you're even handling the chemical. So you should use these as a resource if you're not familiar with uh, a material or a chemical, like something like PMMA you've never heard of before. You can come here, you can look up the MSDS sheet, you can at least start getting to know the material somewhat before you ever go into the lab. You're welcome to make a copy of these. Please return the original. Um, every year, these are inventory by Phil Kalika. And uh, if there's one missing, what he does is he will send a general notice to all users and say, please return the MSDS sheet. If not, he will discontinue stocking that chemical until he gets the MSDS sheet because it is required to be on site if we have that material on site. So you can see that one of the other bullet items on here is a first aid kit. It's also behind these locked doors. And this brings us to the point about reporting personal injuries, because I told you it's an awareness of what hazards are in the lab, but it's also reporting. All personal injuries, no matter how small, must be reported to the lab manager or to Betty Cummings, who's the business administrator. And, uh, you know, you think that a small cut on your finger is not a big deal, I don't need to report it. And that's just not true. All personal injuries, we say, must be reported. So if that cut is on an HF beaker, now a small cut is a very serious situation. And uh, we need to make sure that uh, we assess the situation correctly and get you the proper medical attention so that's why we don't make this first aid kit immediately available to you you would just put a band-aid on a cut and go home okay. once you report it if the proper protocol is to give you a band-aid we will gladly give you a band-aid the proper protocol is to send you to the emergency room we'll request that you go to the emergency room so we do have a first aid kit. It is locked up behind the doors, but I'll go ahead and show you some of our gear briefly that we have inside this closet. So you can see back over here on the side. We have the first aid kit that I'm referring to. The PPE protection equipment to do all this with. And we're pretty well stocked to handle any type of situation that's in the laboratory. 
So a little bit about reporting emergent, reporting personal injuries, the emergency spoke closet, MSDSs. The other thing I'll point out to you is on the other end of the building, as you exit the west end, there's actually two roll-up doors that we refer to as the Tactical Response Center, the TRC. At the TRC, um, that's where we do remote monitoring of our life safety system. So in that area, we have uh, terminals, maps of the building, and we're out of the warm zone of anything that were to happen in the clean room. So that's why it's located remotely. It's called the TRC. It's at the west end of the building. This is the emergency spill closet. You can see this is our marquee. Basically, it's there for informational purposes. This is updated with lab closures or, um, you know, availability of equipment or resources in the clean room. So if we know of something coming up that's going to impact what is happening in the clean room, we'll post it on the marquee. So it's a good thing to, to reference as you go through the hallway. The other thing that I want to point out concerning contact information is this emergency phone number uh, list that you have here. Basically, it lists all the staff. It lists their office phones and their pager numbers along with their email addresses. So if you need to contact a specific staff person, it's a good reference. But for emergencies, you only have to know or call one number. All right, and that is the number that's listed at the top of this sheet. This is the SSEL on-call emergency number. It's manned 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. All right, you don't have to call through the list trying to get the right staff person. You just have to dial this number. You're going to get the staff person that is on call. And they're going to be able to address the situation or get additional help. So you don't have to know anything other than how to report the accident and to call that number. So this is the chem room. This is kind of our dirty processing area. We don't like to call it dirty, but these are non-clean processes, I guess is a better way to put it. Um, this lab doesn't have a lot of the engineering controls for life safety like the clean room does. It's more of a typical university lab. So in here, you should really be aware of what you're doing, maintain the proper protocols and be safe. And this room is scheduled because some of the processes that are ran in here are very corrosive, toxic type processes where that you don't want a lot of people inside this room while those are being ran. So you do sign up for this room on the scheduler. Now generally, if you need to enter the room during times that you may not have scheduled it, if somebody was wearing a respirator in here, running a process, I would refrain from going in the room at that time, right? If they're wearing a certain level of PPE to protect themselves, it doesn't make sense that I would walk in there unprotected. So just be aware of what goes on in this room. Watch it carefully. Um, we don't have the engineering controls that we normally have. Some of the things you notice in, in this room are the placards on the door highlighting what types of hazards are in the room. And you can see um, co emergency contact information and uh, these placards. And you see there's flammable solvents, corrosive materials, and toxic chemicals in the room. It pretty much covers it. All university labs should have this type of placard with uh, uh, hazard information and emergency contact information on them so you know who to contact specifically if there's an issue in this room but in our case at SESCL you can always dial that emergency number and get the assistance for any of our spaces that you need. So this is actually the SSEL service aisle this is where the clean room is facilitized from um, you can see from the placards on the door, there's a large number of hazards in here. And for this reason, we don't allow just general access into this space. Generally, we don't want students back here, so it's a staff kind of controlled space. If you need to go back there, we typically will give you an escort and, you know, describe to you what the protocols are. 
that for some reason you need to enter that space in the future, but generally you'll be escorted if you ever go into this space. Um, you can see that here we have uh, visitors badges, and again, these visitor badges are intended um, for faculty and staff. They're black in color. A placard describes that these black badges are for staff visitors and faculty visitors. For you as a student, you would get a blue badge. They aren't here. They're actually controlled by Dr. Grimard. And again, having a visitor isn't a problem per se. We just have to make sure they have an understanding of what the protocols are to be in the facility. So generally, your visitor is basically told that they do understand you cannot process any chemicals or operate any equipment in this laboratory. Your visitor says, yes, I do. Dr. Grimard then will explain to you this visitor can't be more than arm's length away from you at any time when they're in the facility. If you agree to that, basically you will be issued a blue visitor's badge that you can then properly enter the clean room with.